Hey and welcome back. I recently picked up a new pair of dial indicators for the workshop. They're nothing special, but they're going to work a lot better than the other one that I dropped on the floor a few years ago. Now I bought two because I'm going to be turning a few tapers in an upcoming project using the tail offset method. And I think the easiest way to set that up is going to use two indicators. And of course that presents us with a new problem. How do we hold the indicator so that we're able to measure the carriage movement? You could use a mag base and indicator, but on my small lathe that would be a pretty difficult setup. So the most logical solution is going to be to use a carriage stop, which will also have the added benefit of acting as a physical stop for the carriage. Now the overall design does not need to be too complicated. It just needs to be a block of metal that can hold an indicator and it somehow needs to clamp to the ways and hold it pretty rigidly in place. Now the first step is going to be to measure the shape and the size of the ways because we want a pretty good fit on the clamp. And if you're able to use a 3D modeling program such as Fusion or SolidWorks, it might be easier to take a photo of it and just model it up in the computer. We'll start off with a piece of 65 by 40 by 20 steel and we'll fly cut it down to size. The part is a little bit tall, so I'll remove the bulk of it with a roughing end mill and coolant, and then I'll fly cut it down to final size. The first thing that we'll do is drill two half inch holes about 25 millimeters apart. I'm going to use an end mill to make the bottom flat before going in with a half inch reamer. With the holes drilled, I can then mark out and cut the bottom off. 
The bottom part will eventually become the moving jaw if you will, and I figured it would be easiest to do it this way because it will help ensure that the holes perfectly line up. Next, I'll drill and counterbore a hole for the locking screw. For the locking screw, I'm going to be using an M8 cap head screw. And most importantly, the hole needs to line up perfectly concentric with that second hole on the bottom. With that done, I can now mark out the profile that needs to be cut to allow it to clamp on to the ways. For the most part, I will be using the DRO, but having layout lines really does help visualise exactly what I'm doing. The first thing I'll do is come in with an end mill and I'll remove the bulk of the stock that needs to be removed. I'll then tilt it in the vise at a 45 degree angle and then I'll mill out that V channel. Now I think I got lucky with this lathe because the prismatic ways, or at least that raised V bit, is machined at a perfect 45 or 90 degree angle. Not every lathe is going to be like this, some are made slightly less or more than 90 degrees, so make sure to check it before doing yours. And a quick test fit shows that it is a bit undersized. There's a sizable gap on the front, so I'll take it back to the mill and widen that V channel just a little bit. And that is looking a lot better than it was before. Now after deburring, that little radius left on the edge does make it look like there is a gap, but I promise you it's sitting flush and it's looking really good. Next we can start making the indicator holder. We'll start by drilling and then counterboring a hole for an M5 cap head screw. Next I'll flip the part and drill a hole which will allow the indicator to tightly slide into and in my case that's going to be about 8mm. And finally I'll use a slitting saw to cut a small slot to open up that hole and allow me to clamp down tightly on the indicator. With the top half done, I can now finish the bottom. The first thing I need to do is cut the part to length. Next, I'll make up the guide pins. And for this project, I'm going to be using cold drawn steel. You could use ground rod if you really wanted to, but cold drawn steel is going to be good enough.
I'll claim both of them in the lathe, and then I'll drill and tap an M8 thread in one of them. Next I'll weld the pins in place, and I'll do it with it all assembled. I think doing it this way should help ensure that everything stays properly aligned during welding and cooling. And that is looking really good. If I add the screw, you can probably see how this works. The screw pulls the bottom plate upwards, and the two pins help keep everything aligned. Personally, I'm really happy with this design over other ones that I've seen, mostly because the screws are located at the top. Some of the other ones that I've seen have them on the side or at the bottom, which seems like an ergonomic nightmare because it's going to be pretty difficult, especially on my lathe, to be fiddling around with screws on the bottom, so I'm really happy with this design. And with it all set up, I can now see the precise movements of the carriage. I can also use it as a proper physical carriage stop, which is going to come in handy in those projects that need a lot of repeatability, or those projects where I need to get really close up to the chuck. The only real downside that I see for this is I do have to remove the way cover though, but removing the way cover is a two minute job and it really isn't much of a hassle. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope you liked this design. And with that, see you next week.